Hello, my name is Carlos Gonzalez, and in the next couple of minutes, I'd like to show you some of the main features of NASA Firms, which is a tool that you can use to analyze active fire data collected from space. Although active fire locations are normally used by natural resource managers and scientific research, in a recent article, we discussed how NASA Firm has been used by the open source community to monitor armed conflict zones. If you're new to using this tool, this quick introduction is aimed to bring you up to speed with some of its main features and concepts to help you understand when an active fire might be relevant for your investigation. But if you are a bit more experienced, you can also stay with us and revise the subject. Before starting, it is important to highlight that satellite fire data have limited accuracy and should be treated carefully. Please read the disclaimers down below in the description of this video. Now, the first thing that we see on the platform is a satellite base map called the Blue Marble Background. Depending on your preference, you can change this to a street or a standard map or a topographic background to have a better geographical reference when working with the tool. Let's just work with the street background for the time being. To go to your area of interest, you can click the location icon to the left of the screen and search for the location name or simply just enter the coordinates. I'm going to enter 48.00 and 37.81, corresponding to Donetsk in Ukraine, here. According to these buttons on the top right of the screen, the data we currently see was captured during the last 24 hours. But we can change that by selecting either data for today or the last seven days as well. If you want to go back in time, you can select the historical tab and select the period of time you are interested in. You can select and adjust that period here in the calendar or change the number of days from the drop down list here. The platform will highlight the selected period over a timeline or a slider located here at the bottom of the screen where you can either move. extend or shorten the period of time you want to analyze. Let's select the last 31 days. Now, what are these red dots that we see on NASA firms? Satellites do not only provide satellite imagery, they also have instruments aboard that can detect heat. In our case, those instruments are called VIRS, which stands for Visible Infrared Imaging Radiometer Suit and MODIS, which is time for Moderate Resolution Imaging Spectral Radiometer. These systems use algorithms to monitor the emission of mid-infrared radiation from fires and thermal anomalies, and these can be visualized on this map as hotspots. A hotspot is a satellite image pixel with high infrared intensity, indicating the presence of a heat source. It's important to highlight that one or multiple active fires can be contained within one pixel. Now, first pixels have a resolution of 375 meters that we can measure here and clearly see that the red boxes are smaller than 500 meters. On the other hand, modest pixels have about one kilometer resolution. This means that various would potentially provide a greater response over fires in relatively small areas. When you click on the map, a 1 km blue circle is displayed and the data that you are seeing in the pop-up window corresponds to the pixels that intersect this blue circle. For this instrument satellite combination, we have a number of fires and thermal anomalies that were detected. Now, the coordinates that we see here correspond to the center of the fire pixel and this field here tells us the time of capture for that data point. It can be in GMT, or your local time. There are a couple of values here that can be useful for your research. One of them is the fire radiative power of FRP and comes expressed as megawatts. Although depending on many factors and to be treated carefully, this value gives us an idea of the fire intensity or magnitude. The higher the value, the more intense the fire could probably be. Another important value to consider is the confidence level for the fire pixel, expressed as low nominal and high for various pixels and from 0 to 100 for modest pixels. 
Although again, depending on many factors, confidence levels are related to the quality of the data and how certain we can be that the fire pixel is not a false positive. All the data that you see here now is under basic mode, but we can go to advanced mode and be a bit more selective about the type of data you want to see on the map. When you open the drop down list here, you can see several options. Depending on the incident you are investigating, you might be interested in those pixels with a nominal to high level of confidence and high FRPs. So in that sense, you can select for example, FRPs in all these drop down boxes. And then use the sliding bars to set the right magnitude for the FRPs. And you can see in the screen that you start to see less fire pixels, but you see only those meeting your criteria. Now that we have learned how to search, locate, and narrow down the amount of fire instances, let's have a look at an example and understand some of the concepts. Between the 10th and the 12th of January 2022, there were reports of gas flaring at this refinery in Scotland. This is what the flame looked like. The corresponding NASA firm's data shows that there were fire pixels with FRP values as high as 5.59 megawatts and nominal confidence. Going to Turkey during the wildfires last year, one of the fires looked like this. After cross-referencing the incident in NASA firms, we can see FRP values between 30 and 300 megawatts with nominal to high confidence. Although these values should be used only as a reference, they can help you to understand how big the fire detector could be. However, knowing the geographical area and the conflict you are investigating is essential. You could determine, for example, that the FRP values are too high for the type of vegetation, or the historical data shows that no seasonal fires took place in the area in previous years, or perhaps some reports might be available about troops moving through the same area which makes heavy fighting likely. After evaluating all data, you could decide whether or not to warrant further investigation into the fire incident. With that information, we finish this very quick introduction. I hope this can help you to explore our article and use NASA Firm's tool for your research. Thank you.